Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I don't know. A, I didn't see all of you here this afternoon. You, you missed a great meeting. My wife preached. She's sitting right there. You know, next month we're going to be married 46 years. Amen. And I still love her the way I did the first day I met her. She chased me all over town till she found, got me, but she got me. Amen. And I, you know, I'm happy about it too now. Praise God. Hallelujah. The, the, the first 200 years or 100 years or so after, after Christ died and he was risen, you know, the Christians would meet each other on the street and one would say the greeting would be, he's risen. And the other person would say, he's risen indeed. Amen? That song reminded me of this. And I thought, I was sitting there thinking to myself, wouldn't it be great if, you know, this Christmas season we were walking down in Walmart and somebody's coming along, we know the Christian, he said, hey, he's risen. And the other person goes, he's risen indeed. And, you know, everybody would be looking and wondering what's going on, and they'd have to come over and ask, and we'd be able to tell them about Jesus, who it was that was risen, amen? Praise the name of the Lord. Thank God that he's risen. Let's open our Bibles this, mor this evening. I'm used to morning preaching. To Luke, chapter 1. Verse 26. It says, And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent to God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth. He was sent from God into the city of Galilee, into the Galilee in the city of named Nazareth to a virgin in spouse to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in to her, and he said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. You know that as Christians we're blessed among all nations? That in, in the world today, we as Christians have the Holy Spirit living in us. And we are the blessed on this earth. Amen? In verse 34, it's, Mary says, says, Then said Mary to the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man. Mary saying, this is impossible. I'm going to have a baby? It's impossible. She knew how women become pregnant. You know, she wasn't with any man. So how could this happen? You don't just become pregnant, do you? Do you know anybody that just became pregnant? I mean, it takes two. You know that guy at the pool at Bethesda? He thought he couldn't get healed without a man, too. Mary thought she couldn't get pregnant without a man. This guy says to Jesus, I have no man. He thought he couldn't get healed without, without a man, but he did. Amen? Jesus healed him. In verse 35, it says, the angel answers her. She says, I don't know a man. How could I be pregnant? And the angel answers and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born unto, unto thee shall be called the Son of God. Amen. Things are, things are not always going to happen the way we know they have to happen. See, Mary knew how women had to get pregnant. That man at the pool of Bethesda knew how you had to get healed in that pool. 
but things don't always have to happen the way we think they should happen. See, the power of the highest is going to overshadow you. And there's going to come forth things that you thought were impossible. Amen? Things that were impossible in your life. And you're going to know that it was from God. Because only God can make these things happen. In verse 36, Gabriel says, And behold thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. Gabriel looks at Mary and he says, Look, if you think it's impossible, go take a look at what God did with your cousin Elizabeth. She was barren. Elizabeth's name means an oath or a promise. Amen? In chapter 1 and 13, God promised the child to Elizabeth. It says to Zacharias, she says, For thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. See, he was promised. To her. She was barren. And barrenness didn't just mean that she had no children. A barren woman was, a, was of low regard in society. If a woman was barren, she was termed as useless. You were looked down on. It spoke of a, being a failure, barrenness does. Well, God told Zacharias, God's going to overshadow her. God's going to overshadow her. And she's going to be restored to the place of respect, a place she was meant to be in, a place she desired to be. You might be hearing a voice inside of you saying tonight, it's impossible for me to produce that. But the word to that barrenness, that impossible thing in your life, is it's right here in verse 37. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Amen? Nothing shall be impossible in your life. Take a look around and listen to what others are saying about God fulfilling their hopes, their testimonies, and start believing for yourself. There's a burden coming forth. And it won't be because you have a man. It'll be because you have a God. Amen? In verse 45, it says, Blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance or a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. Blessed is she that believeth, for there shall be a performance. Blessed means fortunate. It comes from the word fortune or multiply. And it's talking about causing you to multiply. Amen? He has already fertilized the egg, and you will no longer be barren. You will bring forth. You will multiply. This is the year Hopes are going to be fulfilled by God's divine intervention. Amen? If you agree with that, if you believe it, you better say amen to it because God's going to do it. In Romans chapter 4, I 
have to find it fast because I only have a little bit of time. Romans chapter 4, verse 16. It says, Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed. Not to that only which is of the law, for the, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. See, we are the seed, and seed multiplies. It brings forth fruit, and faith is going to cause the seed, you and I, to bring forth our hopes and our dreams, the impossible things. Hopes are things we desire. In verse 18, it says, Who against hope, believed in hope, speaking of Abraham, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Who against hope, see, when he knew it was physically impossible, he still believed God. Amen? When it's, if you think it's impossible, you still have to believe God. He says, he believed God because he knew nothing is impossible with God. What changes in the natural over time? You may look in the mirror every day and over the years see your body changing. And nothing ever coming forth out of it. But those natural changes that we could see with our eye has no effect on what God could do. He doesn't need a young woman to bring forth or a young man. He can do anything. Nothing's impossible. Did you ever think about this? Abraham was able to have children. He fathered Ishmael. With Sarah's concubine. It was Sarah. She was barren. When God gave Abraham the promise to fulfill it, he took away Sarah's barrenness. He took away her reproach, her last hope. He caused a 90-year-old woman to start producing eggs. Her body had to produce an egg to br bring forth that child. It, she started producing eggs at 90 years old. And he put hope into her of having a child. God's going to afford fertilize some eggs this evening. Amen. Amen. And there's going to be a birthing this year. About this time next year, there's going to be a birthing. Hey, don't laugh too loud, you know. She was 90 years old. She was past the age. You may be past the age. God could do anything. You may think the right time has passed. But now's the right time with God. Abraham thought it was too late for this hope that he carried when he was a younger man. But God promised. He said about this time next year, a child will be born. You will have your hope. Faith fertilizes the egg of hope. And a birthing takes place that only God can cause. No one else could cause it. No human being, nothing in the natural, but a supernatural God only. In 2 Kings, chapter 4, hallelujah, verse 8. Speaks of Elijah, Elisha. 
It says, And it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Sh Sh Shunem, where was a great woman. And it doesn't mean a big, a great big woman. You know what I mean? You, I mean that's not what it's talking about. It's talking that she was a noble woman. She was a good woman. And she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that as often as he passed by, he turned in thither to eat. This is the woman that set a place for him in her house every time he would go by. And in verse 13, he says to her, after she's fed him, she's made a servant's quarters for him, and he says unto him, a prophet's quarters, he says to, to his, uh, his servant, Gehazi, say now unto her, to this woman, behold, thou hast been careful for me, or you took care of us with all this care. What is to be done for thee? Would, us, would, would you have me speak to the king for you? Or would you have me talk to the captain of the armies? And she answered, she said, I dwell amongst my own people. He says, what do you desire? What are you hoping for? She said, I'm, I'm comfortable. I dwell amongst my, I'm in comfort. I'm living in comfort. But there was a thing that she thought it was too late. That time had passed her by. You know, there's, there's many peoples in church now that they've had God speak a word into them. And they've been carrying it for years. And they think it's too late that God has passed them by and it'll never come to pass. But I'm here to tell you tonight that God's prepared to fertilize that egg of hope that has been laying dormant within you for all of these years. And it's ready to bring forth a birthing. Time has not passed you by. In verse 14, she says, he says to her, what, what then would you have me do for her? And Gehazi, Gehazi answered, says, she doesn't have a child. And her, and her husband, now listen to this, her husband's old. She doesn't have a child. In other words, time passed, it's too late. She had no kids, she's barren, it's too late. There's no seed to fertilize my egg of hope. It was impossible. See, without hope, it's impossible. Everything's impossible without hope. In verse 15, he says, And he said to her, Call her. And when he called her, she stood at the door. And he said, about this season, according to the time of life, nine months, thou shalt embrace the son. And she says, No, my lord, thou man of God, don't lie unto me to your handmaiden. See, we have to go to God and stir up that hope again. Get it moving in our bodies. Start remembering what God has promised. Bring that promise to the forefront. Paul said to Timothy, he said, stir up that gift that's within you. Stir it up. Stir up that hope that God has given you before. And let it come to the forefront that God might fertilize that egg. Hide it no more. Don't leave it buried. Time has not passed. It's not over. There's new beginnings. Keep it alive. One word, one visitation can cause it to be birthed. And he said, it's a word from God. And she says, no, it's too late. See, it's never too late with God. 
It's never too late with God. You could be on your deathbed and God could raise you up and cause you to do something that he told you you were going to do years, years before. He will fulfill his word. In verse 17 it says, And the woman, what happened? She conceived. She conceived and bare a son at the season that Elijah had said unto her, according to the time of life. See, a birthing takes place. When Sarah doubted because her, her womb was dried up in Genesis 18, God asked Abraham a question. See, if you think your seed is dried up, if you think it's past the time, God's asking you a question tonight. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Amen? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Then he says, according to the time it takes, I'll return and she will have a son in nine months. She'll be holding a son. She was listening when the angels were telling this to Abraham. And at first she doubted. But as she heard God, God's word, her hope began to live again. See, as we hear the word of God... We were just talking I, to the pastor. We were say, saying about speak the word. Let it out loud. You have to hear it. Read it to yourself. It may sound, sound silly, but sit down, read the word to yourself in the day. Get it in. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. She was over there listening to God speak to Abraham and faith start rising and rising and her hopes start coming alive again. At first she doubted, but her hope began to live again. She began to produce an egg. In a short time, her body began to change. You know how it is with a woman when she's pregnant. She gained a couple pounds. The sign of a child inside her began to grow. And she would remember what God said. As we remember the promises of God, our bodies begin to show signs of a birthing. Our attitude changes. Amen? Our countenance changes from being that sad, pitiful-looking person. We start smiling and being happy. People can't understand what happened, but the word is getting in there, and our hope is growing, and there's birthing going on in there. Something's growing, and it's going to come out. We act different. We start saying like Elizabeth says. She says, this is how God dealt with me to take away my reproach among men. That's back in Luke 125. Elizabeth, that was Elizabeth's answer. Let me read it. Thus hath the Lord, Elizabeth says, Thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked on me to take away my reproach amongst men, my barrenness. She's saying, what God caused to bring forth to take away her barrenness and her reproach amongst men. See, God will cause a birthing in your life that will make people look at you differently and he will be glorified through it. Elizabeth had a son. 
Her whole life was changed at home and in society. And the son glorified God unto this day. It's in this book. He's still glorifying God. Hold on to your hopes. See, you never know. In Philippians 1 and 20, Paul says, According to my earnest expectation. According to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed. Amen. He's saying, I'm going to hope, I'm going to expect, I'm going to trust God, and I'll never be ashamed because God will fertilize that egg of hope that's within me. And I'll see it with my eyes. It'll come forth. In Colossians 3 and 1, it says, says, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. See, we have to start seeking the godly things and get our eyes off what's going on in the natural. God doesn't put natural hopes within you. He puts things that are impossible for you to do. He'll never send you against, against somebody that you could beat. He's going to send you against a Goliath. And then he's going to give you the strength to overcome that Goliath. He'll never send you in a battle that you could win easily. Get your mind on him. He says, if you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Amen? Praise the name of the Lord. Get your eyes off, off of the natural. See, the natural robs your hope. It robs your hope. You may, if Elizabeth had hope of having a child, she looked at her husband, she no way. She looked in the mirror in the morning, it just can't happen. But she looked at God, and all of a sudden, she started growing a little bit. You know, walking around the house. She, that, that egg of hope got fertilized. We have to get our eyes off the natural and get them on the supernatural. We're going to close here. See, see, this is, I think I got across the point that we have to keep our eyes on God no matter what's going on in our life. And, and, and this is the year, I feel, within my spirit that God's going to fertilize some hopes and we're going to see a birthing in the church that we've never seen before. Things are going to happen. God told people many years ago, put things in their heart. He, he put it into their spirit that he's going to do something. And I believe this is the year God's going to fertilize those hopes and they're going to be birthed birth out this year. And people are going to be amazed at what's happening in the church and not only what's happening, but who God's using to make it happen. Amen? Amen? Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. I don't know if you want to take over, Pastor. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. You want to keep going on? Or? Yeah, I know, but I'm, I think we've got enough. Praise, Praise the Lord. I thought it was going to go along. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Triplets. Triplets. Maybe we'll have quad. <laughs> Amen.
Amen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I couldn't find anybody there in there that had them. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. 